Hello, everybody. Jeff Mason and Jackie Mahaney here, episode 95, coming to you from St. Louis and Scottsdale, Arizona. Hello, Jackie. How are you today? Hey, Jeff. Greetings <laughs> from a nice, beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona day. I said it's under 100 degrees today, so we're all excited for June. Yeah. That's not bad. Oh. I, I'm excited to be on your show today. Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And yeah, could you just share a little bit uh, with the audience about, you know, who you are and what you do? And uh, then we'll kind of kick it off. Absolutely. So my name is Jackie Mahaney. I'm a real estate agent here in the Valley of the Sun, Scottsdale. Um, my team is called the Realtors of Scottsdale.com. Not to be confused with the housewives, Jeff. <laughs> I, okay. I've heard you say that. We keep the drama out of the deal. So, I like yeah, that. We've got a hot housing market, and I'm excited to um, educate your listeners on it a little bit today. Good. And um, have some fun talking about Arizona. Absolutely. Well, let, this is awesome. Well, thank you so much again, uh, folks. We we welcome you today. And if you uh, you like the show and you want to subscribe, a lower right hand portion of the screen on the YouTube uh, channel, if you're watching it, you can just go over that favicon, and that'll take you to the subscription zone on YouTube. Or you can you do have to be signed in on YouTube, or you can catch us on any one of the uh, 26 platforms we're on out there, uh, audio wise, Stitcher, Spotify, and all those great places. And that um, that brings me to you kind of just saying thank you to Dietz and Matt for uh, taking care of the uh, sound and the visuals. They do a great job and just going to have some fun today talking to another fellow podcaster. So how did Jackie and I meet? Well, we met uh, via the podcasting um, kind of arena, if you will. Um, I'm on Spotify. She's on Spotify. Just kind of ran into her and, you know, bingo. We started uh, just, hey, said, wow, this would be a great person to have on it as a guest. We, I guess we had about an hour discussion on the phone. Really interesting uh, backstory that Jackie has. And so we're just super excited to talk a little bit about business, uh, life events, some really cool thing uh, happened there. Um, talk about real estate and talk about podcasting. And uh, so we're just going to have fun today, Jackie. And yeah, so uh, gosh, you know, where are you from originally, if you don't mind us asking? Okay, well, I'm from Iowa. Yep. The place to grow. The place to and, grow. Yeah, Sioux City, Iowa. So we are the home of Jolly Time Popcorn, Subi Honey. Right. Some pretty cool things come from Sioux City, Iowa, including me. So. <laughs> well, that's great. So, so awesome. So now you come from a large family. I guess you were one of six children. Is that right? Yeah. One of six children, mom and dad. And uh, we grew up right across the street from our Catholic church. So like there was no, you know, there was no excuse to not get your butt in church on Sundays and, yeah. ho and holy days. And any other day, mom thought yeah. her kids needed to go over and you know, get some, get some God in them. Yeah. Sure. Well, how did that, how did that upbringing in, in, you know, a rural part of the country like that with a large family, how did that shape you to, to, to you know, today? I mean, how's that, did that shape you to the woman you are today? Absolutely. You know, first of all, I'm the youngest. And so I got to um, witness and observe Yeah. everybody else along the food chain, right? What upset mom? What upset dad? Don't do those things. Yeah. Yeah. So, some people would say I got off a little easy, but really it was just because I was looking to see what was a good thing to do and what was not necessarily a good thing to do. Yeah. Um, but my parents were just really, really hard workers. You know, they owned several rental homes in our community. And um, my mother would take me over to those homes when people were moving out from them or whatever. And um, she would show me in some cases, you know, like, you're going to live like this if you don't have money and work hard. So she scared me into, I better make money and work hard because wow. I didn't want to yep. necessarily live in one of my mom's rentals, right? <laughs> well, that's good. That's good motivation, you know? Yes. So yeah. now would you, would you oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. But we were always, um, you know, with a, with a big family, you know, there was always a lot of sports and activities yeah. going on and, and things like that. And my, my parents, we worked at the Interstate Speedway in Jefferson, South Dakota on Sunday nights where my dad was an announcer and my mom sold tickets and I sold snow cones. Wow. So right there. Well, I, yeah. Hustling from a young age. Yeah. So you were in the sales profession as, a, as an early. So did you, so the youngest, I mean, did you have to fight for food at the kitchen table and, you know, or did you, you know, there was a six year age gap and I just 
in general, didn't like food anyway. So most people would end up, can I eat that? Are you going to eat that? And I usually would just, you know, give it away. Shovel it away. And then uh, my mother would say, now you better eat something. So yeah. I was pretty small for my age. Yeah. So. Oh, that's funny. Well, so folks, I just want to kind of give you a little bit of a, an idea where, where Jackie was situated as, as a, a young girl. So if you go, if you're in Kansas City, Missouri, you're on the far western edge of Missouri and Kansas is just right on the other side because there's Kansas City, Kansas too. And what you do is you take Route 29 for about three and a half hours up uh, through the valley there. You're kind of going through up towards Council Bluffs, Iowa. You hit, uh, you hit Omaha. And then Sioux City, Iowa is about another 75 miles north of, of Omaha, Nebraska, which sits on the far eastern edge of Nebraska. And, you know, where Sioux City is, the reason uh, Jackie mentioned South Dakota, is literally, I, I guess it's about three, four miles past South Sioux City, you're actually in South Dakota at that point. So yeah. it's, you're kind of in a... The, tri the tri-state area, they yeah. call it. Yeah, yeah, you so... Can, you can actually be on one area of land and you can see Nebraska across the river and then South Dakota and then Iowa all in the same spot. Yeah, very cool. Great River Delta there. You know, some great scenery from from really almost St. Joe, Missouri uh, on up to Omaha. Just great stuff. And then, of course, you've got, you know, you've just got always the river kind of hugging you on the on the western side as you go north from Omaha. So, yeah, it's it's a, it's what I guess you would call the Great Plains, the upper Great Plains, you know, and so that's where it is. So now, how did you get to Scottsdale from there? What, how did that work? Okay, so I got to tell you what happened. I took a detour in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Okay. I lived up there for five years. Okay. I was quite young. I was in my 20s. And no offense to anybody of my friends in Minnesota, okay, but it wasn't for me. It was, <laughs> it made Sioux City seem like the Bahamas is what I thought. Wow. It was just so much colder. And so after living there for about five years, I literally one day just called my mother who was living in Sioux City. And I said, Mom, I'm moving to Arizona. I had never been here. I really hadn't even heard much about it. Wow. But that's what I was going to do. So the next day she called me back and she said, Honey, are you really moving to Arizona? And I said, Yes. And she said, I will come with you. And so out we came. And uh, it's been 23 years. And wow. I've never moved anywhere else. Wow. So how, you know, does the blood, I mean, you come from that cold, cause Sioux city, Iowa is pretty cold. I mean, you're, you're right there. I mean, it's, it, you know, sure. Minneapolis is colder, but I mean, does the blood thin out when you move down there? Is that just a, is that just a fairy tale or does that actually happen? I mean, it's not a myth. Okay. It does actually happen. Wow. And an example of that is my brother who was a letter carrier in Sioux city for 33 years, retired. And he's now living in Arizona. And the first summer he was down here, he was so hot. And all year long, like in January, he was wearing shorts when the rest of us were wearing boots and parkas wow. in January. Wow. Yeah. And now yeah. he's been here for about eight years. And he, and he is cold. He's wearing his hoodie in January. Seriously. So your blood does thin and your body acclimates to the heat. So it really does. That's amazing. Yeah. I, uh, cause I notice as you know, I'm getting older, I get, I get colder easier. I, I guess most old, you know, most people as you age do, but you know, I mean, gosh, it's just like, uh, I wake up in the morning and it's like, you know what, I gotta have a pair of socks on now, you know? And it's just funny, but yeah, I just wondered if that, you know, just one of those things you wonder in life. Uh, now sunny days, how many days a year on average? Average does Scottsdale see the sun? Okay, so we're at 300 plus days a year of sunshine. Wow. Yeah. And so for us, when we do get those cloudy days or the monsoons, they hit in like July and August where it's just rainy and thunderstorm and cloud. Or, you know what? In January, February, we'll sometimes get snow, Jeff. Wow. I've had snow in my McDowell Mountains, you know, no that kidding. I can see from my window. And we love that. But um, so those are all treat days yeah. for us. The, wow. the Seattle rainy days are treat days. Yeah. Um, but we have 300 plus days a year of sunshine. And you get used to that. Yeah. You're, you're, the serotonin level in your brain, yeah. you know, the vitamin D on yeah. your skin, like it's just so healthy. And it just makes you, it invites you to yeah. go outside. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I get it. I mean, my, you know, my wife uh, can't stand a string of, you know, that third cloudy day in a row. And, you know, we have relatives that live in Portland and, you know, how, how they endure that 90 days of sun a year. And, the, you know, it's just I, we don't know. But, um, yeah, she gets a little bit antsy. So I get it, you know, and especially when you start getting used to that steady diet of sun. But that's uh, that's really interesting. 300 days. And it's I guess it's low humidity, much like a desert air like Vegas. Right. Pretty much. Yeah, definitely low humidity. And so, um, you know, when they say it's a dry heat, yeah. like today it is 95 degrees, but it actually doesn't feel that bad at all yeah. um, because it's not sticky. It's dry. We yeah. don't have a lot of bugs. Um, there's a few mosquitoes, but not too many. Yeah. And in general, just not the kind of gnats and bugs that I'm used to, you know, growing up in Iowa for yeah. sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I did a tr Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No fireflies. No fireflies. You don't have them. You don't have. No. It, what? I, so I drove. I was driving through farm country last night, coming back from Knoxville, Tennessee, and I don't even know what I hit. Maybe you know what I hit, but it was it it was bright green in the middle. You know, at ten o'clock at night, and when it hit my windshield and you know expired, I had this. I had this fluorescent green. This thing had. This thing had somehow remained fluorescent on my windshield. What the heck did I hit? Yeah, those are the fireflies. They and we are. used to run after those and chase them and put them in little jars, yeah. you know. That was that was what we did for fun. So they right? stay lit that much. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. We had a few when I grew up, but not not that many. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, uh, well, very cool. So I went to a trade show in Phoenix, I guess a couple of years ago in, in late January, and it was actually, uh, you know, it got to be maybe 68, 70 during the day. Um, it was overcast, believe it or not, for the couple of days I was there, but it was, uh, you know, you could tell low humidity. So anybody looking to make a shift uh, to a different part of the country, you know, you know, you're getting a pretty good deal. You know, Florida's more hum humid than than this so you're you know you're missing out on some of that humidity yeah i will tell you that the toughest months definitely are july august and september yeah you yeah. know um just because it does get really high like the 115 right. range right um and july you're like starting to hate it and yeah. then august you're just getting a little angry right and yeah. then September, you're like, all right, yeah. where's the nearest plane? Like, I got to get out of here. I got to go to the ocean or do something. How far so, How far away are you from ski country up there? Okay, so that's what's also great about our location is we are close to everything. If you wanted to go to California, which, you know, um, not to get into politics necessarily, yeah. but uh, Governor Newsom right now, he is being called Arizona's best real estate agent. Yeah, bingo. Yes. Bingo. So many people are moving here from yeah, California. Yeah. Uh, it's a five hour drive over to the coast. So you can get in your car yeah. and go to the ocean. Um, it's an hour and a half plane ride up to, to Denver. You know, in the summertime when it's really hot here, you can just get in your car and go to Flagstaff, yeah. Arizona. That's only uh, an hour and a half drive north yeah. and it's 20 degrees cooler. Right. Yeah. So yeah. anywhere. Yeah. Wow. Just in great location. That's really good. That's really cool because that, you know, having that, having that flexibility to change your geographics that quickly. I mean, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I would imagine, uh, you know, I'd imagine the salesperson of the month is governor Newsom make the salesperson of the month once in a while on the, on the plaque wall. He is salesperson <laughs> of all of 2020 and 2021 so far. Uh, that's great. California. They're just, yeah. You know, they feel like they're being taxed at an outrageous. Sure. Uh, the only thing they're not moving here for is the weather. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Our, our, our business uh, environment is extremely friendly yeah. here. We used to be uh, a lot of just snowbirds mm -hmm. or um, hospitality mm -hmm. uh, and travel and tourism. But now we've gained so many different mm -hmm. industries. In fact, we're uh, one of the Silicon Valleys, so to speak, wow. of, of the South. No Southwest. kidding. No mm -hmm. kidding. So you're attracting, so you're attracting some uh, growth there as well. So uh, has the market, I mean, I, in, you know, in relation to some of the other major metro markets, uh, St. Louis, Philadelphia, Boston, Chicago, you know, and then, you know, Seattle, Portland, that kind of area. I mean, is, are you, are your houses appreciating as much oh, man. or more? Jeff, I think, I think we're one of the highest appreciation in the whole wow. country, actually. Wow. We're definitely uh, number one, number two, number three in that migration, inward migration from other cities and states. Um, and yeah, our appreciation, we've gone up, I think, 25% even so far just this year. Wow. Uh, the appraisers, the poor appraisers, yeah, yeah. They, they, can't, they can't even keep up keep because up. 
the next month, you know, it's 10%, yeah. it's 5%, yeah. it's 15%. So yeah. Yeah. That's tough. I, I think, I think we're going to get to a point here at some point this year within 2021 where we're still going to see appreciation, but I think it's going to stabilize yeah. a little bit. Okay. Okay. And, As and more and more homes come on the market. Now we, are the inventory levels low there, like in a lot of other spots across the country? Yes, they're extremely low. So right now we have um, about a little over five, I think it's a little over 5,000 homes total in the whole Phoenix metro area. Wow. And we have 812 homes for sale in Scottsdale. Wow. wow. 812. Now, so. and for people who don't know the geographic um, you know, situation there, could you kind of paint a picture for how Phoenix and Scottsdale um, you know, separate and, and meld together, if you will? Yeah, so um, we call it the Valley of the Sun. We have a huge circumference. Like you can literally get in your car in a suburb of the valley called Queen Creek, okay, which is in the Southeast Valley. And you can drive and drive and drive till you get through a town called Surprise, okay. which I always say, surprise, I'm here, <laughs> you know. And that can be two and a half hours. Well, So that's how big the valley wow, is. That is huge. Um, Right. And so Phoenix Metro, obviously Phoenix is what people know of. Yep. Scottsdale is northeast of Phoenix and we're up in the, the mountains, yep. you know, and for my real estate, I've been in the Valley for 23 years. So I know a lot of the whole Metro area, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I really focus in on that North Scottsdale area and then Cave Creek, Carefree, if you've heard of those, okay. um, a town called uh, Fountain Hills. Okay. Rio Verde. So those are all kind of in the northeast side of town. But then, you know, we've got a whole west side of town and a whole southeast, which is Gilbert, yeah. Chandler, Mesa, okay. Tempe, if you've heard of towns like yeah, that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, okay, great. Thank you so much for painting that kind of picture. And folks, you know, just grab an atlas or go online and take a, you know, zoom out on Google Maps or something and take a peek at this. But it's really, uh, you know, it's a wide area. Uh, traffic wise, I mean, are you typically uh, um, com in comparison to other major markets? Is your traffic uh, lighter, heavier than, than an Atlanta, yeah. you know, people really love our freeway system here. Um, because for one, it's all on a grid. Okay. So you, it's hard to get lost. Yeah. You know, you might travel for a long ways on McDowell mountain road, yeah. Yeah. but, um, it's all grid. And then we've done a great job of growing. Uh, we've got all circular, you know, freeways, the one Oh one, the two Oh two, the three Oh three, the 51, lots of great, fast flowing you know, okay. freeway system. Okay. And then we have beautiful designs and art all up and down our freeways wow. as well. Nice. So yeah, it's and clean, yeah. Jeff, like yeah. this city is so clean. Wow. We don't have a lot of graffiti. We don't have trash laying around. Like it's just people come here and they're like, wow, I didn't realize how clean and beautiful it is yeah. here. Yeah, that's really nice because there, you know, a lot of that beautification, you know, doesn't doesn't adorn every highway system. I mean, I, I drive wow. on a you well, you where you come from. I drop, you know, those highway systems, although they're they're simplified, there are a lot of you know, twenty nine going north to south from Omaha up and you know down to Kansas City is uh, two lane for the most part. But you know, it's Billboard City and it's you know, it's just uh, there's not a whole lot of you know, pr pretty sights to see on the other than the landscape. So yes, to, so for that beautification, that's awesome. So light uh, highway systems, very easy to navigate, very easy to get around. Are you finding the corporations there? Uh, are they in hiring modes? Are they, you know, are, are they, you know, is this new growth coming from companies that are there that are expanding or are new companies flocking to the area? New companies are flocking to the area. Okay. We've had many companies from the Seattle, Washington area that are just tired of the taxation yeah. up there. Yeah. Feel like they're being handcuffed yeah. for their business. Okay. They're just uprooting and they're coming to Scottsdale. We've got a huge nationwide vision or nation, nation, nationwide vision. Nationwide. Okay. There yeah. is a nationwide yeah. vision too, but yeah. that's a different company. <laughs> um, huge corporate company for nationwide insurance. Okay. That's just off of the 101. We've got a lot of biotech companies. Okay. Um, yeah, just huge amounts of growth. We also have a really good hospital system down here with the Mayo Clinic. Okay. If, you know, in the yep. Midwest, yep. you know, the Mayo Clinic sure. is up in Rochester, Rochester. Minnesota. Yeah. We actually have two Mayo Clinics out here in Scottsdale. Nice. I did not know that. So, yeah. Yes. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, so okay. industry is just yep. booming here. Good. Um, and I will say our governor has done a great job of incentivizing companies to come mm. and take root in Arizona. Yeah. Well, very cool. So I know, and I appreciate you explaining that. So um, if uh, you, you know, as you work with clients and as you work with homes that are getting listed, are you finding th that there's more requests now for, you know, just like this uh, icon in behind me here for offices and homes for working out of the house? Is it a bigger thing now? Oh man, yeah. this whole pandemic has changed what people are looking for in yeah. their homes. Yeah. Okay. For one, um, if you're in a relationship or you're married a little time or a long time, you found out during 2020, whether or not you like this person, <laughs> right? Yes. You're like, man, you used to go to an office eight days and, yeah. you know, eight hours a day. Now you're here stuck mm, with me. Yes. Right. So, so there's been people who are like, wow, we really love each other. And others are like, man, I got to get a divorce. Something's, yeah. something's oh, got to change boy. here. Oh, um, boy. so at home office space is huge. Yep. Yeah. Indoor outdoor living is so popular here because we can be outside for so much of the year. We have, um, you know, obviously a lot of people like their pools. Yeah. A lot of people want a pool here, Jeff. Yeah. 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 Well, I can imagine like a fleck of Florida pretty much really, yeah. you know, it's just to get so hot. Yeah. You need that cool off, yeah. but they'll put TVs outside, wow. you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And really make that whole exterior a part of the, the square footage of the home room. Yeah. So, yeah, but yeah. Right. And then also, you know, just with the shift in employment and stuff, some kids have had to come back and live at home. Right. Or now people are leaving or maybe grandparents are coming to stay. So casitas are very popular here. What's a casita? Okay. So a casita is a little room off of the house, which has a bedroom and a bathroom. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times a little tiny area, maybe for a kitchenette where you could move mom into. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So yeah, it's a bill. So the, the catering to that, you know, knowing that some people do come with extended family is something that they're catering to as well. So Casita. Now, is that uh, indigenous to kind of like Southwestern style homes or is that, I mean, because I've never heard the term. Okay. Yeah. Well, Casita in Spanish means little house, Okay. okay. you know, so um, yeah. So it's just attached to the big house and uh, we can also use them for, you know, a man cave. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Or a woman cave, yep, yep, a little, little yep. space. But yeah, having a casita is really yeah. a treat. Oh and there's gosh. a lot of homes out here that have that. So. Oh, and with all the, uh, you know, I was just uh, down in Knoxville uh, a couple days ago, and they were telling me that, that that's where HGTV is headquartered, uh, which I didn't know. I knew Jewelry TV was down there. But uh, so HGTV, I mean, think about how HGTV has changed us you know casita is like a playground for an interior decorator to you know oh my gosh i can have i can just see people you know their wheels spinning what can i do with this you know yeah well and that's another business that's really booming here jeff yeah. is the remodel business yeah, I bet. because a lot of the homes especially in the scottsdale area are you know that 20 year age yeah. now yeah. right yep. Yep. and yep. so what's really popular is obviously the grays the whites right. the creams the um the quartz countertops right. in the kitchen even some golds are coming back wow. you know some of that swanky 70s yeah. Yeah. look yeah. stuff is coming back and so i also have a team that i work with i have a team of interior designers i have a team of remodelers i have roofer contractors that i work with and you know a whole team of people that if you come to scottsdale and you find the house but it doesn't yeah. look so good. Yeah. It's like all those ugly houses, but on a great lot yeah. and has all the square footage. We've got a whole team of people that can help you like HGTV to make it, you know, your dream. Yeah. Home. Well, very cool. So you're a full service. Well, now let's get into some of your social media handles and where people can get a hold of you. And then we'll kind of get into some of the uh, other stuff of, in our discussion today. But how, um, where can people find you uh, on social yeah, media? So so I'm on Facebook, okay. uh, realtorsofscottsdale.com. I have a business page for that. Okay. Um, my, my email is real easy and it goes along with my website, which is realtorsofscottsdale.com. Okay. And you can reach me there. My phone number, my email address is, is there. Um, I'm not on Twitter. I don't want to okay. get in any Twitter wars with anybody. Yeah. 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 Um, and you know what? I used to be on Instagram, but I, I just didn't have time to keep up with all of yeah, it. It's a lot. So. Yeah, so pretty much uh, realtorsofscottsdale.com would be the best place to, okay. to find me. And you have a, and you also have a partner, correct? 
So my podcast, which yep. we talked yeah. about, yeah. is on um, is on Spotify. It's also on Apple Podcasts, okay. and it's just Realtors of Scottsdale. Okay. So it's simple. I mean, you coined, I mean, you got it, you know, you got the great name right there. I mean, that's the awesome name. And really that's where, you know, you can tell Jackie has a great voice right here and explain a little bit, you know, we'll talk a little bit about your, your uh, time in TV and radio, but you know, when I first heard, you know, stumbled on your podcast, I mean, your delivery, your, your in genuine enthusiasm for podcasting, and you're doing something that I don't think a lot of people are doing, correct me if I'm wrong, but you, you are putting yourself out there as a realtor, kind of giving people updates on the geographic region in a fun, very fast, entertaining way. I mean, right? Is that correct? Well, thank you. Yeah. You know, Scottsdale really is sexy. It just is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> golf courses yeah. in the world yep. maybe yep. we've got the spas we've got live music going on even during the the lockdown we weren't locked down we were still having fun out here in arizona so we wow. you know if you're into horses yep. okay if you're into um if you're a weekend warrior on your motorcycle your harley and you want to come out for bike week we have so many fun things going on in this town and in and, and around the area that i decided to do a podcast that doesn't just talk about the housing market, but also talks about, yeah. Hey, what's going on in Scottsdale this week? Yeah. You know, yeah. last week we just had Arizona restaurant week, Yeah, yeah. Uh, really neat. but, but whether it's bike week yeah. or restaurant week, or what are the great places yeah. to go hiking here? We've got Camelback mountain for hiking. We've got Tom's thumb, so many yeah. places to get fit and healthy. Um, some yeah. of the best restaurants, yep. that kind of stuff. So I let people kind of know what's yeah. happening what are some fun things to go see, do, and, you yeah. know, I mean, it's experience. a great, yeah, yeah, it's seven minutes, eight minutes, six yeah, minutes. Is it, yeah, it's the length. And so I'd encourage anybody, if you know, you're going to retire soon, you don't know, you know, you, 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 you want to make a move. You don't know where you're going to go. You know, you're looking at warmer weather markets, maybe for health reasons, the doctors have said you should go there. Uh, tune in to Jackie's uh, podcast and just get a flavor for what she's talking about. Uh, very entertaining. You use uh, humor, some different voices. Uh, you just, you know, you really have a very natural ability ability to you know talk at uh, on the mic and it's just it's really entertaining um yeah so did you learn that when you were in tv or how did you okay so yeah secrets out <laughs> my background okay i spent 20 years in radio and television here in the phoenix metro area um i worked for several different radio stations like um knix radio which used to be owned by buck owens remember from yeah, Yeehaw? absolutely Okay. Yep. The red, white, and blue guitar. Absolutely. That was our symbol. No kidding. Yes. And then I worked in TV for channel three TV, which is America's family or Arizona's family TV. Um, and, but I was on the advertising side. I sold advertising for 20 years for different radio and TV stations, but I had so many clients that I helped write their TV and radio advertising. And so a lot of times I would actually be, especially a voice on the radio. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. So if they needed a female voice, I would come up and 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 read the ad copy and you know stuff like that. Well, so, yeah, and you could you can tell you've been trained or you you've have some experience doing it. I mean, this is evident just listening to it. Um, where do you tape your podcast from? Is it in your home there? It is. Wow. It is. Yeah, well, I just I started. I'm I'm a fan of podcasts, which yeah. I love your podcast yeah. too. By well, the way, thank you very much. Got, great topics and awesome guests. Thank you. Uh, but I love listening to so many different podcasts. And then I just thought, you know, it could be a part of my marketing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Obviously I'm into advertising stuff. I thought this could be part of my marketing for my real estate. And uh, yeah, I just, um, let's see, there's several apps. I mean, there's several different apps. You can do it. It's no charge. Wow. Wow. And I just, I have a microphone that I yeah. use a professional microphone and some headphones and um, I sometimes, for the best sound quality, you go into your closet. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm in a studio with you know they and they've really uh, they've made it soundproof and everything. But yeah, I, um, one of my friends in New Jersey said to me, you know what? Yeah, just go in a closet that has a lot of clothes, and if you're going to mm -hmm. do it, just have a little light, and uh, man, it'll sound so good. And and interesting that you say that because uh, you so, yeah you don't yeah. I don't hear echoes in your podcast at all. 
Yeah, Spreaker is the app that I use. Okay, okay. Okay, that's that's I couldn't think of the name yeah. for a minute, but it's Spreaker. But yeah, I just go into my closet with my headphones and my little microphone and you know, I get lost in it. I get yeah. lost in time because it's just so much fun. Yeah. Well, and so we we talked a little bit on the phone about the creativity port side of the fence of podcasting. That was something you said, you know, that really floats your boat. And it and it does float mine too. I like the I like the putting a show together. And kind of, I, I just let the rest of it take care of itself. But explain your your passion and your uh, you know affinity towards the the programming and putting it together. I just it is such a creative outlet. I mean, some people like to draw pictures that are artists, right, or paint. I like to write, and I love to speak. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I, I'm also an avid reader. I like to educate myself on a lot of different topics and stuff. And so for me, it's, it's, it, it's the same as like somebody who likes to draw a picture. Yeah, yeah. I just so enjoy, um, getting on a microphone and, 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 and talking and not knowing exactly what I'm going to say. I very rarely plan out anything that I'm going to talk about. Um, it's just, it just comes what's in me. my, what's in my head and I kind of yeah. let it free flow, you know? Well, and that's, and that becomes very relatable and becomes very entertaining, you know, and you, you know, I try to, yeah, and it's a it's a it's a fine art, you know, to learn. I mean, I've never had any classical experience behind a mic, but you know what I'm trying to do. This is our 95th episode, and maybe in my 22nd interview or something. But you know what I try to do is have a guideline or an outline. But I try to just you know memorize what we're t- going to talk about or you know the basics of it, and just keep it flowing, keep it sounding entertaining and I think that you know that's like that's a sweet spot I'm aiming for every show it's hard to do you know all the time well, but you know it takes two though for what you're doing I, mine is just I'm by myself right, right. and right. trust me if I don't like what I said right I start over start over so, yeah yep. but you know you're having live guests like yep. me yeah and so um we didn't do a lot of prep for this other than you know yep. you kind of we talked about what we might discuss but for you also, Jeff, it's so important for your guests to not be like yep. a toad. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. True. I mean, and it's, yeah. then you want to, you know, you kind of, you kind of try to do your best to draw them into it, engage them. And a lot of times it's just nerves. And we've had some people that got nervous and, you know, once they get over that nervousness, you can tell I've had some friends call and say, wow, it was, I could really tell in the 10th minute that guest really got comfortable. And, and that's neat to hear to, that, that they see that happen on, on tape too. So yeah, it's, um, but you know, I, I love, uh, I love just the experience of getting out there as an outlet like you do. I think it's just so much easier than than writing. And uh, I, I heard a gentleman who has written a number of books uh, recently say that, you know, he'll never write another book and he'll only do podcasts because it's just such an energizing experience, you know, rather than sitting down there and saying what you want to say in, in written form. And um yeah, that's uh, so very, yeah, I mean, so cool that you've adopted this and you've gone after it. And, you know, you're helping people understand and you're marketing at the same time and you're having fun at the same time. So what what better option uh, than that? Now, are you doing it on a regular basis or is it something you just do when you have news? You or? Know, well, and that's, I need to get better. I need to get better because when I get really busy, like I was the last couple of weeks mm-hmm. where... So here's the situation too with our market right now. Um, There's not enough houses on the market Mm -hmm. and we have so many buyers that want to find a home. And so when you get a buyer that you're working with and I I deeply care, like I want to help them find a home, but you might be like showing homes five a day. And then the next day you've got another three or four. And then what about this one? What about that one? Because they're just, it's almost sometimes like grasping for straws, like what's available, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so when I get really wild like that with my schedule, then, you know, yeah. obviously the podcast, you know, has to take a back seat, takes a back seat. But the minute that I kind of come back up for air again, which I like, because I'm a person who also needs some downtime just yeah. yep. to relax. Sure. Um, I, I'll head into that closet and throw on those headphones and, you know, <laughs> get a few words out while I can. So, 
Yeah. And reminder today, I actually need to put one out for, for this week. So, oh, well, that, well, it was fun. So, yeah, well, great. Thank you so much for sharing all that. And really folks, it's a lot of fun and you got a lot of great voices and you got a lot of, you do a lot of fun little stuff. And so I won't give it away, but people have to listen to it. So very cool. Now, um, let, let's switch gears a little bit and go to life events. Cause as we had, uh, our, 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 you know, hour long discussion just to kind of get acquainted and, you know, figure out what we're going to do on the show. Um, you, you told me a story that was, uh, very, very moving and, uh, about your mom. And, um, you know, we, we talked a little bit more about this obviously than we can today, but, but tell us, I mean, you're okay talking about that. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I need to share it because it's something so special and unique that happened that it's really my duty and responsibility to tell people. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So my mom, her name is Royal, which very, I love. Very cool name. Yeah. Yeah. And we didn't even know it was so cool when she was alive. And now that she's on the other side, now that she's in heaven, I see Royal everywhere, you know, wow. not just Royal Cola, but Royal on the back of trucks and Royal coffee yeah. and kind of, so I always say, hi mom. Every time <laughs> I see Royal. But um, I had, uh, Jeff, you've heard, and maybe your listeners have heard of kind of a, a near death experience, right? Where people are on the operating room and yep. they, they, sure. they elevate above their bodies sure. and they see the surgeons working on them and stuff. I had what is called a shared death experience hmm. with my mom. I didn't know what it was at the time. I knew it was special. I knew what, what was happening, but I didn't know that there was actually a name for it. Um, but basically my mother, um, was 83 years old and she was just ready to go. Like she didn't have anything necessarily mm -hmm. wrong with her that I knew she didn't have cancer. She didn't have any diseases that we really knew of, but she knew she was ready to go home and she called herself into a hospice on a Monday. Okay. And I'm like, mom, yeah. you can't do that. You can't just yeah. call yourself into a hospice. She did it on her own. On her own, yeah, on her yeah. own. She's like, I'm calling hospice. I'm like, what? Yeah. You know, you can't just do that. Well, anyway, she knew what I didn't know, which was that her body was shutting down and she was ready to go home. So um, that Thursday, so from Monday to Thursday, so that Thursday night, I went to bed. I was living in Gilbert, Arizona. My mother was in a hospice home, not, you know, about four miles from my house. And at 3.31 in the morning, I woke up out of my bed just in a, you know, state of a deep, deep inhalation. And I felt a tap on my shoulder and I looked and there was my mother, you know, saying, Hey, 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 wow. I just want to let you know, I'm going. And, um, I didn't, I didn't want, uh, I didn't want you to worry about me because we had this thing that I would call her every day on my way to work. Yeah. And if she didn't answer her phone, I'd be like, mom, you've got to answer your phone. Like, I don't yeah. want to worry about you today. Sure. And so she, she had her people there, Jeff, and she was telling them that she'll come with them. But first she has to tell Jackie that she's going so that I don't worry about her. Wow. And I said, okay, okay, mom, I'll see you later. Wow. And out wow. the window she went. And I, uh, I called my then boyfriend who was working night shift. He was a pharmacist and I knew he'd be awake overnight. And I said, oh my gosh, my, my mother just passed. And he said, well, how do you know? Did hospice call you? I said, no, they didn't call me. She was in my room. You know, she told me she was leaving. And so he told me I better hang up and call hospice. And so I called hospice and I said, this is Jackie Mahaney. How's my mom? And they said, oh, honey, she's fine. We just checked on her. And I said, I think you need to go check again. Yeah. And so they went and checked and came back and said, you're right. Wow. Your mom's gone. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so how, how uh, I mean, so, you know, how does, how do you process that? It's a miracle and a blessing because when I started, the, when we started today, remember I told you, my mom said, anytime we should go to church across yep, the street, yep. there was no excuse. Yep. That's all when, when you, when you, when you go to church and you pray and you have faith and stuff, it's all good. It's all positive. Um, but this elevated mm -hmm. that experience sure. to wow. Yeah. Like, yeah. This isn't just about me going to church. This yeah. isn't just about me believing in God. This yeah. is me experiencing, yeah. you know, sure. the afterlife in this life. Sure. And it's real. And it's become a testimony for me to tell others because when you do lose someone you love, you know, 
your mother, your, your wife, your friend, whatever, your pet, you know, heaven is real yeah. and the other side is real and they are with you. And it's just a different dimension. And we're just here yeah. on a limited time basis. Yeah. We're, these bones are a rental as a switch yeah, foot would say. They're yeah. a rental, yeah. you know? Yeah. I mean, they are. And so, but yeah, so it's, it's, it's changed my faith just from the perspective of sure. that it really, you know, really cemented it in reality. Sure. Yeah. Well, that's very neat. So your, your faith has become stronger since then and it has continued. Oh. Is that right? How, how many years ago was this? Yeah. So that was eight years ago. Okay. Wow. Eight years ago, April 5th. Wow. But that's amazing that, uh, and you know, I mean, you know, the, that is the world of the supernatural. I mean, God is, uh, you know, uh, you know, that, that is a supernatural world that, that, all, you know, everything, uh, happens in there. And, uh, you know, he, he speaks to us in many different ways. And one of the commonalities we had when we talked on the phone and, and just for anybody who's never tuned into one of my previous shows is that, you know, when I got, um, when I surrendered and, and one night and uh, Christmas Eve in 1987, when I surrendered and just said, God, you take the wheel, I can't do this. And I just did it. Well, there was a, there was a physical transformation or something happened inside me. I can't explain what it is, but you know, it, uh, it, it I, I know what, I know what it is. I couldn't explain, I can't explain the feeling. It was like this, just, just bubbling inside me. And, you know, I, I really think it was at that moment that, that, you know, God came into my you know life and, and it was the Holy Spirit who came into my life. And when that happens, you know, all of a sudden, how can I explain that I never drink again? How can I explain I, I, my, you know, my, my urge for swearing went away and it was nothing that I did, but, you know, I'd never had another drink since, since December 23rd, 1987 to this day. So I'm still never had to go to any AA classes or anything, but it was, you know, God's way of letting us know, and, and, and maybe with, with what happened with your um, mom and that shared death experience, you know, letting you know that he's real, he's here and that, you know, and he's, he, we don't know how he deals with everybody, you know, I mean, in different ways, but it, it's the supernatural that that's behind it all. So it's really cool to hear those stories. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure there's a lot of people that say, oh, that's, you no. know, that, yeah, that, that couldn't happen, but you know, I, it does. And, um, you know, we, who are we to say, put God in a box and say, you can't do it that way, dude. You know what I mean? You know, so uh, very cool. And, and you know what, if it gets us to change, which it got me to change, it got you to change, uh, you know, that's good. And I yeah, think and, well, even right. in that moment, Jeff, right. like the, the ex-boyfriend that I had, it flipped his world. Yeah, sure. Okay. Sure. Because he was the, the night nurse yeah. that I called and she went back and checked and my mom was actually gone. It changed her world. Yeah. So it, at that moment, even, yeah. you know, despite the stories I now tell in that moment, it changed several people's world as they saw it yeah. and witnessed it in real time. Yeah. I mean, just the fact that you called up and you knew she was gone and she, nobody called you, you know, I mean, it's just, right. uh, it's, you know, it's, well, I, I, you know, I think uh, Jackie that we've talked a little bit about the atmosphere out there and, and, and in the political climate that exists and, you know, we're certainly seeing a world that has a lot of questions. We're seeing a world that has a lot of um, uncertainty. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of people that are scared. They've never been this scared. They don't know what to expect. What's happening? How is this crumbling all around us? What's going on? And I, you know, I really believe that out of this, there's probably going to be some type of, you know, some type of, uh, revival, if you will, of sorts where people, because they can't explain what's going on. They don't know how to, who do we grab onto? Who do we, who do we partner with? Who do we do life with to get us through this uncertainty? And I think that what we've seen in 2020 and as a continuation in 2021, I mean, it's, uh, I, I don't know if you're, if you feel the same way, but I think you do that we're going to see some changes and people I think are going to look to God more than they have. I feel that way. I do too. And you know, another just like symbol, my mom, in addition to her name being Royal, her um, collection was of lions. She had lions all over the place. In wow. fact, I've got two that I'm looking at right here, but wow. small lions, big lions. Yeah. And think about it. Lions are all about courage. Yeah. They're all about yeah. strength. They're the king of the jungle, yeah. right? Yeah. And I think what's happening in our world right now where we're all being forced to choose what we believe 
whether it's right or wrong, we're right. all forced to now choose our right. value system. Bingo. Yeah. And we're choosing whether or not to be a lion yep. or to be a lamb. Yep. Okay. So, you know, for me, just, you know, my mother, her name, Royal, the lion and being courageous and stuff. That's what's really helped me yeah. with any of the fear in yeah. 2020. Like God does not want us to live in fear. Right. Correct. Correct. No. Correct. And I we know who does. So. Yeah. yeah. And it's no, seriously. And, you know, um, yet to your point, you know, people are really put in a position now where they do have to choose because if you don't think that what we're embroiled in is an ultimate battle of good versus evil, uh, you know, ch you know, do some research because I, I firmly believe that what we're really seeing is a battle between good and evil. And, uh, that's what I think. Um, so, oh, you know. yeah, there's just, it's, and you know, Jeff, a lot of this has split friendships apart. Sure. sure. It's split families apart. It sure. has split the church. Yeah. You know, I'm Catholic. Yeah. There's a lot of priests who are coming out against bishops yeah. and against even the Pope right now. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of division, but I believe ultimately it's for the greater good that we are all just being yeah. put like, hey, man, what do you believe in? Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I, I totally agree. Uh, you know what? So you um, listen, we're taping this show and, uh, it, you know, it's going to air in August. Uh, so for people who don't know, but I mean, there's something going on in Maricopa County, Arizona, as we are talking, that is about, well, I think about 11 pallets away from being figured out. And, um, that may do some very, uh, interesting things because, you know, I think that, uh, there are so many Americans all across the board that, you know, they forget a party affiliation. And I'm going to say this, you know, it is we need election integrity. We have to have it to go forward. If we don't have it, we're, we're on a broken axis. And if we have a broken axis where we'll never, we'll never have sanity. No, you know, um, you're right. It, it's a big deal here in Arizona. Um, of course, it's not getting any uh, local coverage. Right. right. You know, right. you have to go into the podcast world. You have yeah. to go into even even the conservative media isn't, you know, necessarily covering. Um, but there's, there's apps and there's places that people can yeah. get that information. But Jeff, we've got something really exciting. And I don't know if you've heard this or not yet, but have you heard who's going to be running for governor for the state of Arizona? I have not. Okay. And I don't know if you heard the story, uh, Carrie Lake. Have you, have you heard of her at all? Is she a TV personality? Or yes. she? Yeah. Okay. He was a TV broadcaster here yes. in the Valley for about 25 years yeah. on Fox 10. Yeah. And she just announced this week her run for governor. Um, and what I said, which will be very interesting, is how will the media, yeah. she's been the media sweetheart for 23 years in this town. How are they going to treat her now? Yeah, this, this is the young lady that just recently retired, correct? Like a she couple months ago? Yes. After 23 years yeah. of broadcast, yeah. um, number one rated evening uh, show with John Hook in the Valley. And she got tired of reading um, what she considered to be a lot of propaganda wow. and untruths on the monitor. She just couldn't wow. couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. And so she came out and immediately started being attacked by some of the media that mm. she was the little sweetheart of for a long time. And now she just announced this week. Uh, run for governor of the state of Arizona. So we're in for wow. some interesting times that, here for sure. That is, yeah. that is interesting. And, you know, um, there, there's another, you know, would love to just have, you know, news outlets across the country report the news that, that, you know, and not, not filter it or sense, but just report the news that's happening. You know what I mean? And if does she, then I guess she came from that mold, if I'm understanding correctly, is that right? She came so from that mold and she just really believed that she was not being allowed her um, journalistic integrity well, anymore. Well. You know, um, they, I mean, if, I don't know if you've seen those videos online or not, but they have basically like 50 different news broadcasters from 50 different cities in the United yeah, States. Yes. And they're all saying the exact same thing. Right. Because, right. you know, and this happened during my career in media and advertising um, we used to be owned by 33 different radio stations, 33 different owners. And then by the time I left, it was like three. 
Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, iHeartRadio owns radio stations all over the country and they syndicate. Right. And, and, and so, so do all of the TV right. stations. And so they're either owned by AT&T right. or Comcast or, and they all have an agenda and they're all right. pumping down their information. And so even though you've got a local station in Detroit, Michigan, yep. it's owned by the same people in Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah. 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 It's, 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 so, yeah. To me, if you really want to be well-rounded, you have to go in search yeah. of alternative forms of, of media. Yeah. And that includes the podcast world. Yeah, it really is. It's, it's opened up and just opened up so many opportunities for people to listen to different uh, dialogue and to listen to different things. And yeah, I think that, um, I don't know if you agree with this or not, but I just think that there's such an appetite for truth now. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, 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 we started a little place on our website called Career Corner, and we've done a couple little uh, videos, three, four minute videos for junior achievement. And we put them up there as well on our own. And a couple, one of the last ones I did was on truth. And, you know, I just encouraging these young kids that, you know, you, you may not realize it yet, you, you know, you're nine, 10, 11, 12, but the business world, uh, people, consumers, customers, you know, we are craving for the truth. We have been, we have been lied to by in the business world. I mean, I've worked for 32 companies, nine different industries over 35 years. I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt, you as consumers, you as customers, you're getting lied to a lot, a mm -hmm. lot. Oh, yeah. I mean, from businesses, from, you know, what happened to this order? Oh, well, this happened. No, it didn't happen that way, but that's what they told. There's so much of it, and there's so much of it in, in our regular life that really people are craving for someone to come along and just cut through the muck and say, here's the truth. And you know what? Sometimes the truth doesn't really sound great, and sometimes it doesn't... Um, make people happy, you know, customers, if you tell customers the truth and order went awry, I mean, it's a tough deal, but you know what? Um, they deserve to hear that. And that's what I've always said. They deserve to hear the truth. And, you know, I lied for, a, you know, as an alcoholic and, and drug addict, you get, you know, you, you get immersed in that bubble where just everything is a murky, ugly mess and you know you're telling i'm telling you one version of the story i'm telling your neighbor another version my buddy and i got three four versions going on then i got to keep lying about it for years and years i gotta remember i told you version a him version b i mean it's crazy and i you know i mean so i i mean I, but that's how i operated for and that's you know i thought that was right and so i just think that you know the more our country can see and feel transparent truth it, we're craving for it we're craving it well and what's interesting though what i so i love learning and i love studying people and probably that's from me being the bottom of six mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. what i say yeah. like i i liked seeing what everybody did and thought what's so fascinating to me though jeff and and this is why free speech has to be protected yeah because you can have two beautiful souls, two beautiful people, okay? And they're both good people, hardworking people, honest people. And yet their versions of the truth couldn't be more opposite yeah, yeah. because of where they're getting their information, right. Right? right? And so that's what's also causing the division. But, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with people having different opinions, but right. when you start shutting out free speech and somebody's right to hear an yeah. opposing point of correct, view. Correct. That's what is sacred that we're losing right now. Yeah, that's very and they're dangerous. shutting off all of these strong voices mm -hmm. just because they don't want that person's version of the truth. Yeah. It's very that's, dangerous. Very dangerous you know, slope. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's, yeah. I mean, no, it, it is. And you're right. And, you know, uh, and, and, you know, when you think back on it, I, you, maybe your household was the same growing up. I, I, I'm going to take a stab and say, I bet it was. I never knew who my parents voted for. I never mm -hmm. knew if they were Republican or Democrat or independent. I never knew. And I never knew it about my friends, their parents, we, you know, and what you come to find out later in life is, you know, you know, because it seems like, you know, more and more people put their affiliations on the table now. And, you know, you find out, wow, that person was this affiliation all these years. I thought they were that. And what was really neat is we could all 
agree to disagree. We could all talk civilly. We could have civil discourse about things that was intelligent. We could laugh about it. I heard, I heard parental conversations when I was a kid in the seventies, they would talk about some things, current events and, you know, and right and left and center could all laugh about things. And, 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 it, still enjoy being an American. And I just feel like, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're headed to an area where I just really feel, you know, I'm, I'm concerned for our country, concerned for our freedom of speech. And yes, podcast world has opened up an alternative network for people to hear the voices they're not able to hear elsewhere. And it's so, it's so important. You know, yeah. The two things we used to never talk about was politics and religion. Yeah. Right. And now those are the two things that everybody wants to talk about. Yeah. yeah. yeah and really so is. I don't know. That's cool too, though. I think, yeah. I think the more we talk, the more yes. we listen, the more we learn and, and you know, what's wrong with having healthy debate? Right. Why does, why do you ever, why do people have to get angry? Right. Just to disagree. Why can't we discuss it? And I feel like that's where our country is really struggling is that I think there's a certain percentage of the population. They don't want to hear it. Right. And they don't want it. They don't want you to say it. Right. It's like, why? Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just, you know, yeah, it's another point yeah. of view. Uh, you know, I love being sold. I'm a salesperson. Yeah. 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 Tell me. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Well, yeah. And, and you know, so we'll, we'll listen. I think, um, I think we're coming into some very interesting times. I think I really do. And I think the alternative, um, you know, unfortunately for, um, the networks and some of the bigger cable outlets, I think they've done themselves a disfavor and because I think they may find themselves, um, you know, selling the office furniture at a discount rate, you know, 10 years from now, never re- thinking it could ever happen. But, uh, you know, as more voices like this spring up and, and again, I, you know, we're, we're not mean spirited this conversation. We're just saying, you know, it, this is not a good slope to go down. You know, it, it's only going to, it's only going to end up badly. And yeah. And I, and I think the other thing is, I think people really need to take ownership for who they did vote for. Yeah, okay. Yes. You know, I don't really care about people's personalities. I really care about people's policies. Right. Right. Exactly. You Bingo. Know? And I think that's Policy what yeah. personality I, yeah. I could care less. And so, um, you know, if Joe Biden and his team, if they were to put out some good policies, I'd be the first one to be like, yay, right. that sounds fantastic, right. you know, um, and, and anybody else that runs. But when it's all about, you know, I don't like this person. Right. No, it's like, what policies do they, yeah. are, are they representing for our country? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. No, it's I, and, a popularity contest. Yeah. It's a policy contest. Yeah. And when you really dive back into those 70s and 60s conversations that I remember, you know, my folks and, you know, it was, it was policy driven It mostly, you know, I mean, yeah, sure you say, oh, that guy, he doesn't do well on TV, you know, Nixon looks a little stiff on TV or whatever, but, you know, I mean, it was, uh, yeah, it was just, it was a healthier way to go about life and, you know, um, don't, you know, isn't it better to smile, you're a smile, you smile a lot, isn't it better to smile and have a good oh attitude rather yeah. than have a negative yes. one, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, but, uh, cool stuff. How, how has, um, has the administration changed the real estate markets at all? I mean, are you, are you well, fine? You know, only from the perspective of that, um, we're still considered a red state. And so we have a, you know, we have a Republican governor, um, we did vote in, I guess, some Democratic mm-hmm. senators, you know, um, but how it's changed is just that we're getting a lot of people from quote unquote blue states yeah. that are still looking at Arizona as a red state. Yeah. And that's the reason they're moving that's here. That's the reason, yeah. So um, there's lower, political. Lower taxes. Politically um, driven. Better yeah. cost of living. Yeah. yeah. You know. Um, more affordability for the houses. I mean, even though our houses are going up 25% or 15%, it's it's nothing to somebody moving here from Washington state or California or even Colorado. Bingo. Yeah. Right. Yep. So during the lockdown, we weren't locked down. Our restaurants weren't closed except for those first like couple of weeks. Yeah. And people were feeling, feeling like their freedoms were being completely infringed upon. And so, like I said, governor Newsom, 
number one real estate agent in Arizona, you know? Now, I do wonder, like, if some, let's just pretend like Caitlyn Jenner were to become governor or somebody yeah, else. Right, right. You think they'd go home? I wonder yeah. if they're going to go home and get free up some inventory. Yeah, I don't, right. I don't know. But, you know, got, we can probably ask the people in Oregon and, and uh, Washington that question because didn't they have the great migration there like 40 years ago, 50 years ago, right? Now, you, you, and you do still talk to some Oregonians and Washington, Washingtonians that, that say, you know, oh boy, you know, we got a lot of, we got a lot of California influence in this, which you never had, you know? Well, and, and Portland, I don't know if you've heard, but I think their murder rate is, has it, has it gone up like 800%? Yeah, it's up there. Yeah. Their, their violence rate is some crazy yeah. number, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. Do you want to, I mean, do you want to live there or do you want to come and live in Scottsdale where you can hang out and feel safe and comfortable? And, you know, we've got a good police department. We're yeah. not defunding our police here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, um, well, I tell you what, uh, I, I guess good for the real estate market. Maybe, uh, as long as, um, you know, as long as the, I guess the, as long as the state doesn't lose its essence. Right. And if you're a red state now, you don't want to, you don't want to lose that, but, uh, and you know, and so we'll, we'll see. I mean, it's going to be interesting what happens. And I think uh, if people aren't watching, you know, watching things alternatively, they're making a mistake because there's a lot going on, uh, you know, behind the scenes that, that, um, uh, tell a story. I do too. For and sure. Jeff, I do want to, uh, uh, put out a little, um, kind of shout out. One of my favorite podcasts is Tim pool. Mm -hmm. He has every night. He has a podcast called Tim cast URL. And I think he's just a very fair and honest kind of street journalist. Okay. He actually doesn't claim to be right or left. He's just a guy that does a lot of honest journalism. And so that's one that I think mm. your listeners could could tune into and maybe get some, you know, good information that, from him. That name sounds very familiar. And then you listened to another one, too. Uh, uh, you mentioned to me one day, the Whitlock. Uh, was it, is it oh, Whitlock? man, I am such a fan right now of Jason yeah. Whitlock. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, he was uh, he's a retired um, athlete. Yep. And then he was on Fox Sports yep. for a long time. Yep. Um, so his background is uh, sports journalism, yeah. but he is now getting into a lot of cultural discussions. Yeah. He's got a friend named um, Curtis Scone and they do Scone TV. They do a podcast once a week, mostly right now about the black culture and things they are both black uh, men. And boy, I just, I love listening to yeah. these guys. They're really putting a great message out there. Yeah. I haven't tuned into it yet, but I need to. So it's called Whitlock and Scone. Is that what it's called? Yeah, uh, so it's s c o o n t v dot com. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, Curtis Scone and Jason Whitlock, and it's Ooh. called Politicking with Jason Whitlock. <laughs> I like it. Oh my gosh, I love it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to find that out. And Tim Pool, thank you very much. Well, um, very cool. Hey, as, as we kind of wind this up, and it's been so fun, and 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 literally, um, I'm gonna just have you go over your social media contact one more time, and then is there any questions I forgot to, or any question I forgot to ask you that you wanna me to bring up? Um, no. Oh, just, I want to let everybody know that again, they can contact me on realtorsofscottsdale.com. Not to be confused with them housewives. We keep the drama out of the deal. <laughs> That's how I can be reached. Um, podcast on um, iTunes or Spotify, Realtors of Scottsdale. And um, no, the only thing that we didn't discuss, and I hope we get to before, because I know we're going to tie into one of my 70 songs. Yes. The Lost in the Shuffle track. Yes. Yes. I didn't to mention that you know one thing that i could always do as a kid that i can still do jeff is i can backwards roller skate wow can you really yeah. yes so you, yeah I, cool. what about ice skate do you do backwards ice skating too or not no i can't i can't get on ice skates <laughs> but you know we used to go to the roller rama every friday night in sioux city iowa wow you know we would just go skate and we had the fluorescent lights going on and everything. Wow. And if you could backwards skate, you know, then, then if a boy wanted to skate with you, you could be cool enough to backwards skate. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. That, that was me. That, that was, was you. Me. That was you. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Me and a pair of roller skates, not a good scene. Me and a pair of skates, hockey skates, a better scene, but not good, you know? So, uh, well, that's fun. Um, yes. So, uh, we, as, as the uh, listening audience or viewing audience knows, we do a lost in the shuffle track every, uh, at the end of every show. And you picked one that has something to do with roller skates. So why don't you tell us who it is and what the song is? Well, so, um, it's, I got a brand new pair of roller skates yep. 
And you got a brand new key. <laughs> exactly. Okay. By Melanie. Yes, Melanie, who was the first woman, I think, to sing at Woodstock. Yep, 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 absolutely. Okay. And it came out, what, like early 70s when I was just a little tight, but by the time I was six and I was riding my roller skates around outside in Sioux City, Iowa on my back porch with my sisters playing softball in the side yard, um, we would turn, turn that yep. radio up and I would jam to this song. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I tell you what, you know, I, so I was, uh, when it came out in 1971, I was still uh, eighth grade. So, you know, like, I'm, so Melanie Safka. Now, as we, I researched this, yes, it became very intriguing story because um, she was born in Astoria, Queens, but she grew up in New Jersey, whereas where I, I lived for 32 years and, and grew up in my formative years. And, and uh, she was a product of Red Bank High School, which is on the New Jersey shore. So we have a back. 117 miles of shoreline in New Jersey. I lived on the Jersey Shore on different barrier islands for nine summers, eight summers actually rather. And so she came from a shore town, uh, got her break in Long Branch, New Jersey at the Inkwell as a young lady. She's a folk singer. And yes, yeah, she performed one of the three ladies to perform at Woodstock, which I never knew. And then she writes... Um, this song, and uh, it, it goes number one at the end of 1971, stays number one into 72. But the, the way she, did you see the history on the way she wrote this song? It's the wildest thing in the world. She's in a 27-day, she finishes a 27-day water fast in 1971, right? So her and her friend go to a flea market one morning. They go to a flea market, they finish shopping at this flea market. She just finished this uh, fast. She was a vegetarian as well at this time. And they're, they're, they're driving back home from the flea market in New Jersey. And she sees the McDonald's. She smells the McDonald's. She gets a hankering for the whole McGilla. So she <laughs> says, pull in. I'm getting, a, I'm getting a burger, fries, and a shake. And, you know, so here's this vegetarian, right? Just abandoning ship. Coming yeah, off this, sure. right? Coming off this fast. And she eats this, she finishes the meal, and in her words, she says, 15 minutes later, this song called Brand New Key, which is also known as the roller skate song, floods into her mind. Wow. So it's about, she tells the story that it's about her dad um, holding on to her and and being her support as she learned how to ride a bike. And I guess the, I, I, I guess the roller skating came into it as well, but she just started recalling her dad being there, helping her learn how to ride a bike, holding on to her, not letting go. And she writes this song 15 minutes after slamming down a burger, you know, shaking some fries. I mean... Oh. That is awesome. I didn't know that that yeah. was the backstory of this song, but I like it even better now that I know this. Crazy stuff. So yeah, she, um, and I just looked on, you know, I looked in, into more about her and yeah, she's still out there uh, performing in her early seventies and uh, you know, so yeah, just great story. And that song, yeah, was, you know, got radio play like no other uh, back in the day. So very cool. Very cool. Well, well, Jackie, it has been a pleasure. It really has. And I just, I uh, wish you all the best in real estate and your personal endeavors and with the podcast and keep it up, keep it coming. And would love to see you, uh, you know, just to keep, the, keep the wheels rolling on that whole thing. So, well, uh, thank you, Jeff. This has been such a tremendous opportunity. It's so great to be introduced to your audience as well. And uh, thank you so much for today. This well, was a lot awesome. of fun. well, thank you, Jackie and folks. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we really appreciate it. And please, you know, make sure that you always respond to all inquiries, follow up, but most of all, follow through. Thanks again, Jackie. Have a great, uh, great night and good weekend. And thanks everybody.